We're very privileged to have with us this afternoon uh, Dr. William Lane Craig. He did his PhD in philosophy in England and then he completed a doctorate in theology in Germany. This double doctorate has equipped him to become one of the world's leading defenders of historic Christianity. As a springboard for our discussion today, I'd like you to ask yourselves the question, is the material world all there is? And today I want to sketch briefly seven aspects of the world which I think suggest that there are indeed more things in heaven and on earth than are dreamt of in naturalistic philosophy. Number one then, why anything at all exists. This is the deepest question of philosophy. Why is there something rather than nothing? This mystery, which according to Aristotle lay at the very root of philosophy, is one which even thoughtful naturalists cannot avoid. Derek Parfit, for example, agrees, and I quote, no question is more sublime than why there is a universe, why there is anything rather than nothing. Now experience teaches that everything that exists has an explanation of its existence, either in the necessity of its own nature or in an external cause. This principle seems quite plausible, at least more so than it's contradictory. Now it's obvious that the universe exists. It therefore follows logically that the universe has an explanation of its existence. So, what sort of explanation could the universe have? Well, it seems plausible that three, if the universe has an explanation of its existence, that explanation is an external, transcendent, personal cause. Why? Because the cause of the universe must be greater than the universe. Think of the universe, all of space and time, so the cause of the universe must be beyond space and time. Therefore, it cannot be physical or material. Now, there are only two kinds of things that could possibly fit that description. Either an abstract object, like a number, or else an intelligent mind, that is to say an unembodied consciousness. But abstract objects can't cause anything. Uh, the number seven, for example, has no effect upon anything. And therefore it follows that four, the explanation of the universe, is an external, transcendent, personal cause. That is to say, there exists an unembodied mind which created the universe, which is what most people have traditionally meant by the word God. Have you ever asked yourself where the universe came from? Was there a beginning to the universe? Or does it just go back and back forever? Typically, naturalists have said that the universe is just eternal and uncaused, and that's all. But there are good reasons, both philosophical and scientific, to doubt that this is the case. As the physicist PCW Davies says, the coming into being of the universe, as discussed in modern science, is not just a matter of imposing some sort of organization upon a previous incoherent state, but literally the coming into being of all physical things from nothing. In fact, in the year 2003, three cosmologists, Arvind Bord, Alan Guth, and Alexander Vilenkin, were able to prove that any universe which is on average in a state of cosmic expansion throughout its history cannot be eternal in the past but must have a past space-time boundary. So why does the universe exist instead of just nothing? Where did it come from? There must have been a cause which brought the universe into being. We can summarize the argument thus far as follows. Premise one, whatever begins to exist has a cause. Two, the universe began to exist. Three, therefore, the universe has a cause. 
Given the truth of the two premises, the conclusion necessarily follows. Music